Welcome to our Wednesday night service here at Freedom. Hope you're having a good week so far and thank you so much for being here. Let's all stand together and let's turn to hymn number 216. We'll sing Dwelling in Beulah Land, hymn number 216. On the first verse. seated. Hallelujah to the Lamb is this next song, so you pray for the choir as they sing.
Amen. Let's grab that song book again. Let's turn to song number nine, hymn number nine. God can do anything but fail. We'll sing that chorus here. Sing it out as unto the Lord. God can do anything, anything. Turn around and greet someone here tonight. Let them know you're glad to see them, and the choir will come down and join you. sing that chorus again one more time God can do anything but fail God can do anything 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 God can do anything but fail he can save he can keep he can cleanse and he will God can do anything singing tonight. Remain standing for the offering. All right, fellas, come ahead. And so good to see you in God's house this evening. Hope you had a good day. And I thank the Lord for his blessings and provision in our life. And it's just wonderful to sit back. And we're going to talk a little bit about it tonight. But as you, as you look around, you don't have to look far. Boy, you can see. Um, and as I'll tell you tonight, you, you can see God's hand by the things that didn't happen. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we're going to look at that tonight. But so good to see you, and we're glad you're here. Brother Mike, Miss Mary Beth, well, good to have you. We got visitors tonight all the way from Florida. Isn't that a blessing? They're not visitors. They're, they're still members. They're here. And uh, we're glad you're here, and I hope things are going well. And, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, we're glad you're here tonight. We're going to bow for a word of prayer and ask God's blessing on the offering, and then you can be seated. Brother Dave, you pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us out here tonight. Lord, I know you have something for each and every one of us, and I pray that we'll be attentive to what you have for us, Lord, and, and listen to your word and be able to apply it in our lives this week and move forward. I pray for the offering now, gift and a giver. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs>
Thank you again for being here. If you have your Bibles tonight, uh, the book of Esther, uh, the book of Esther in your scripture, and right after the book of Nehemiah, right before Job, right in there, and the book of Esther, and we'll begin in uh, verse number one in just a moment, and I want to take a few weeks and go through uh, this book, and um, when you don't, you know, when you don't see God at work, it doesn't mean he's not. When God is silent, when God is silent, what do, what do you do? Uh, what do you take from it when God is seemingly silent? And we're going to talk about uh, the first part of it tonight, and let's bow forward to prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, this night. Thank you for every person that's here, and God, I know they've, they've had a day, and uh, Lord, I pray you bless each one. I pray you'll help us to Lay aside those things that we encounter today and those things that we may encounter tomorrow and glean from your word. God, help us, I pray. And we'll thank you for what you do now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Such a From the time I first met him, he's been all to me, and my life with his joy he has filled, and I'm longing for the day when my shall behold him. Yes, one day, one day I will. One day I'm gonna walk on a street of pure gold, and they tell me the half has never Thank you, Miss Carla. I appreciate that. That's a blessing. One day we will. Amen. One day we will. Praise the Lord. In Esther chapter number one, and you know, there are times, and I was on the phone with um, Brother Goff, who went out to California, and um, you know, there are times when you can, you can relish in all that God's doing. And, and those are precious times. I mean, you can, you can see what he's done. And you can 
identified. It's almost uh, tangible, and in many ways it is tangible. Um, he, he was telling me, I, I said, uh, just from one thing after another, how God really took care of them while they were there. And his faithfulness was on display. And those are, those are precious times. Those are wonderful times. Um, when he seems so near and so involved in what we're doing. Like it's great. When we know that, you know, there's no way to explain this except God did this. Like, and it's wonderful in those times. Um, however, there are times when he seems distant. And he doesn't seem so involved. And uh, sometimes they coincide with ongoing um, circumstances that are painful. Coincides with the distance we feel from, from God oftentimes. And so um, it, what is God doing when it doesn't seem like he's doing anything at all? Seems like he's doing nothing. And we come to this book of Esther... Um, we, we come to a book that where God's name is, is never mentioned. Now, we know God is always at work. Uh, he's sovereign. He's wise. He's good. But what is he doing when it seems like, and then key word seems, like he's not doing anything at all? Um, what about you? And when I look at even, look at Iran and all that's going on um, with... with um, Boy, I hate to even mention um, things. It's quite depressing, you know. But when I when I when I look at it, I think, and I know that God is for Israel. I know that. But when you see the media's twist on everything, and and um, uh, you you just you wonder, God, are you are you really doing? What needs to be done? I, I'm thinking, you know, I know what I would do, but I'm, I'm not there, and you're glad I'm not, and I'm glad I'm not, and the whole world's probably glad. But I think, wow, are you, you know, do you see exactly what I see? Well, I got news for you. He sees a lot more than that. A lot more than I see, a lot more than you see. And you think about North Korea, think about Iraq, Syria, Iran, all of it. I mean, you understand, it, it, in Israel, it is so nerve-wracking. I mean, you're standing there on the side of the Jordan River, baptizing people, rejoicing, and there's armed guards in Jordan right across, and, and it ain't um, no mighty river. And this is as far as is from me to Brother Ray there. The water width. And you got guys standing over there on the other side. And then you, got, you, go, you go over on other parts. And, and there's, there's Syrians got cameras on you, watching you. Probably got a bead right on your forehead. I think, man, this is, you know... God could wipe, and it's theirs anyway, but God could wipe all that. You know, God could change all that. Right. It's like that in a minute. But he doesn't. Now, when God seems silent, when God is silent in your mind, and we know that's not fully true at any point, but it may seem like that to you. But when we could come to this book of Esther, and though God's name is not mentioned, uh, he, he does seem distant, and, and he, but he's most certainly at work, and we're going to see that. Um, but this, this is a low time in Israel's history. I mean, they were, they were down. Um, this, the captivity pretty much was over officially, but, but not everybody hadn't gone back. Um, this remnant had, a remnant had returned. Um, the temple finished 516. But the, the fact is, a lot of them didn't go home. A lot of them didn't, didn't go back. And um, they'd grown accustomed to their new way of life uh, away. And uh, they simply chose. God wanted them to return, but they, some of them just chose to, to hang around. And uh, pretty much, a lot of them ignored God. And uh, Israel did that. But what does God do when, he, when his people ignores him? Uh, is his faithfulness contingent upon ours? What does God do when people ignore him? 
Is his faithfulness dependent on our? I'm glad he's faithful regardless. Because that's his character. It's not, it's not on a whim. And uh, it's, not, it's not hinged on whether or not I do whatever. He is faithful. Now he's a faithful father. Don't, don't think some gushy idea of fatherhood. Uh, God is a loving father. And a loving father will chasten his children. But, he, but he's very much, very much faithful in what's going on. So when we break our promises, does he break his? No. I'm glad he don't, aren't you? He's faithful. He's trustworthy. But what about those times he seems silent, hidden, just, just simply distant? How do you explain those times? How do you make sense of them? I think as we go through this book, and not tonight, I'm not going to go through all of it, but I think it'll help us understand what, uh, what to do and, and a little bit of God's character when it does seem he's silent. So how involved is God in our life? He's very involved, whether you see it or whether you don't. Tonight, you, you, many of you drove your car. How many of you drove a car tonight to get here? Okay. And you understand that there's only a matter of feet between you and the car on the other side of the road. I don't know exactly the, the footage between a car on this side and that side. Is it less than 10 feet, Dylan? Would you say it's less than 10 feet from a car here and here? Is it less than 10 feet between the two? Of course, the bigger the car, <laughs> the less. So you, you have a matter of feet between those cars, but yet you're here. I'm here. All that had to happen was a guy to come over three feet, two feet. You to look down for a minute to get your Arby sandwich. I never forget. I shouldn't tell this, but I'm going to. It's as this guy. We 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 had a bus route in in Tennessee, and it was at I was just at Crown College uh, Monday morning, and we um. We had a bus route, and, and these kids on our bus, they made our kids that we bring in look like angels. I'm just going to tell you. They said some words to the pastor's wife that were not very good. That was not a good person to be telling that stuff to, let me tell you. So the pastor took the bus. He told, I wasn't a bus captain, okay? Amen. So... He kept telling his bus captain, quit, you know, you need to, need to watch who you bring in. We want everybody to hear the gospel, but if they don't want to be here, we can't help, you know, that kind of talk. And so he just kept ignoring it and kept bringing these girls that, that were not behaving. And so they said something to the pastor's wife that Sunday morning. And so that was the end of the bus. He took the bus. And y'all think I'm rough on that. He, he, he took the bus. He said, all right, well, just uh, y'all take a van next week. Can't get as many on the van. You say, that's terrible. No, that's managing bus route. If you can't handle it, we're going to handle it. So he handled it. <laughs> he took the bus. Well, and I wasn't upset. I was just along for the ride. You know, I wasn't a captain, so I was just happy. Um, so we're riding along and it was, it was around the world Sunday and guess where we was at? What Sunday? Well, it was, it was taco Sunday. And so the guy driving, the same guy that got the bus took from him, he's now a pastor. <laughs> uh, he reached, we, we, we're driving down the road and there used to be a Levi's building there. That's the college now, but it was the old Levi's building. And he reached down and I could, I mean, I don't know why he didn't ask me to get his taco, but he was so hungry. We was leaving church. He reached down to get his taco. And you know the rest of the story. He reached down to get his taco, run off the road, hit a curb, hit a tree, totaled the van. 
Now, just had got the bus taken. Now he totals the van that he was given. And pastor walked up to me that next Saturday morning at the bus meeting. He said, uh, he said, uh, he called his name. I'm not going to call his name. He called his name and said, it said he had a blowout. <laughs> I said, sir, he did have a blowout after he hit the curb. <laughs> oh, boy. But do you know that things can just happen? So, just quick, just something as innocent, honestly, and I make light of it, but it, it, everybody was fine, everybody was good. He wasn't good, and the van wasn't good, and I don't think pastor was too good, but everybody else was good. But in just a moment, and I had a good, a good co-worker when I was teaching at Champion College and still working at Pepsi some. He was a vendor out in, in rural Arkansas, and uh, a guy crossed over the line, hit him head on, killed him. It's just a matter of minutes. So when we look at those, those non-incidents, we call them non-incident because we're here tonight. Nope, everybody came in good. So does, are those non-incidents, does that mean that God wasn't at work in the non, what we consider non-incident? No. He was just as much at work in the non-incident as he was saving you from an already incident. Grabbing you out of something. He was just as much working. And you got to be careful not to get in a pity party about your situation. Because think of all the things that could have happened already. We talk about all the bad, all the tough. All, I got it terrible. It's awful. It's, it's just terrible. Well, what about all the non-incidents? That happened today. And certainly God was at work in those. And he's, he is involved in our life. And so I want to show you in the next few weeks that there's not one detail in our life outside of God's control. Not one. Not one. Even though he may seem distant. Which at times he does seem distant. Verse 1, chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over 170 and 20 provinces, that in those days King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace. And in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles, princes of the provinces being before him. And when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even a hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, verse 5, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, blue, hanging, fastened with cords of fine linen, purple to silver rings, pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon pavement of red, blue, white, black, and marble. And they gave them drink and vessels. So basically, he's having a, he's having a big party. Having a humongous party. Down in verse, in verse 8. That drinking was according to the law, none to compel, for the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Verse 9, also Vashti the queen made a feast for the women in the royal house, which belonged to the king Ahasuerus. Now, so they had, he, he threw a party. He ruled over 127 or so provinces. And they, you're talking thousands, I mean, Thousands and thousands. Some of them uh, estimate that parties like this would have 60, 70,000 people. I mean, this was not a, a small shindig. This was a, this was a big, I mean, for a full 180 days. You're not talking about little old. This is big time. And he's having this, he's having this party. And, um, and this was, was the summer house because Susa was so hot 
They'd say all, the lizards and the snakes both would die on the way across the pavement. You know, it was just, just terribly hot. And so they had, they had a, a place um, that was cooler. So he threw this party. And verses 3 through 8, it, it, was, it, was, I mean, it, it was immaculate. It was impressive. Uh, the military leaders were on the guest list. Um, it, it was in, in verse four indicates um, many days, even a hundred and four score, and that's 180 days. So again, this is a, this is a, I don't know what they did for work for 180 days, but they had a, they had a party. I guess he may, he may have paid him to be at the party. Who knows? Um, but you can understand not good things are going on at this party. Even though it looks like Vashti and the women were having a party and he was having a party, that, this was not a good situation. The drinking, the, the reveling that was going on um, was, not, was not good. And then in verse 10... On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, uh, these, these fellows come in unto him. And uh, in verse 11, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with a crown royal, to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look upon. But the queen, verse 12, Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth in his anger, burned in him. So he, so he made a, a very foolish decision. Vashti, um, she refused. She had her own party going on. And uh, maybe, maybe for uh, moral reasons, uh, the, the, a degrading situation, possibly. But whatever the reason, she, didn't, she wasn't going. And um, then verse 13, he says to these uh, men who knew the times, and um, they came in, and in and, and verse 15, basically he says, what am I going to do to Vashti? I got a problem. She won't do this. She won't dance. She won't come in here and be a part of our, our party. And so um, the, in, in verses 16 through 18, basically it doesn't say, you, you, don't, you don't just have a Vashti problem, you got a kingdom problem. You're in trouble. Your whole kingdom's in trouble, um, Hazar Harrison. So uh, he, his, his kingdom was in trouble. And then verses 19 through 20, look at verse 19. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him. Or Mike, can I have just a touch more monitor right here, please? And let, the written, let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it not be altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal state unto another that is better than she. Wow. She's out. So banish Vashti, get another queen, but do it publicly. So here we are. Throws a party. It goes south. He gets rid of Vashti. And that doesn't do it. Doesn't sweep it under the rug. He does it in front of everybody so everybody could, could see. And um, I mean, this is, in verse 20, he said, we got a problem. When the king's decree uh, which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great. All the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both the great and small, and the, and the saying, please the king and the princes. And I, I don't think it worked out quite like he <laughs> thought it was going to work out. So the king followed the advice, and uh, according to this command, you know, all these men was going to be ruler of the household, and, and uh, that's not biblical. Ruler of your house is not biblical. Leader is, but not, like, not what was set forth by the Hazwares. So, you know, what is the significance of this? And, and so he sent letters, verse 22, he sent letters in all the king's provinces and every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language that every man should bear rule in his own house and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Now, God is not mentioned in the Bible, in, in the book of Esther rather, God's not mentioned but Esther, God uses Esther. She is mentioned. 
And, uh, you know, two books uh, of the Bible bear a, a woman's name, Esther and Ruth. And um, Esther does exist. And this is not by accident. It is by God's divine design. Um, and, and, you know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And the Bible says it is profitable. And so uh, I'm convinced that we need the message of Esther now more than ever. Because we are living in a pagan society. We're surrounded by pagans. We are the minority. We're not the majority. The, 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 the majority are, are pagans and they're, they're headed in the pagan direction. And so you and I could be looking around and saying, you know what? I don't know that God has his hand in, in anything going on in today's affairs. I don't know that God has anything at all to do with what's happening. Because he seems so distant. There's, there's seemingly non-events because we're looking at our situation. We're looking at the current political situation. You may be looking at your personal situation and saying, you know, I, I know there was a time in my life when God seemed so close. But now he seems so distant and so far away. I'm in the season of non-events. I'm in a season and even in this first chapter, what in the world does that have to do with God using Esther. What's chapter one? How's it linked at all? Do you know God rearranged, I mean, the whole kingdom so that he could perform his will in this situation? And though you may not see the behind the scenes movement, it's there. My wife loves musicals and I don't. That's her. That's how she was raised. And I was raised fishing and, and uh, just doing boy stuff. And she was raised watching musicals. So she loves them. So what does your pastor do? I try to learn to love them too. And y'all pray for me. I ain't quite all the way there yet. But it's one thing about it. I love being with her. Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. You should have. I love being with her. So I, I've been with several musicals with her. And I pay attention. And I don't sleep. And I'm not on my phone. All right. Because they won't let you be on your phone. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not on my phone. I'm sitting there. Probably Diet Pepsi in hand, watching, watching this musical. And it amazes me how much they get done while you got one character out here. On, and it ain't like they can hide much. I mean, everything's out in the open. But man, they get so much done behind the scenes. They come out and they're, they're in a whole nother attire and a whole nother scene. Just, in, just one, th th those guys would just, it'd be part of the musical. And they just roll something off and roll something on. In a matter of minutes, you got a whole nother scene. Now, so often God is doing things behind the scenes that, that are going to make the scene. It's going to be a big, God's going to do something big. And in this case, it was huge. He was, he was preserving uh, his people and raising up somebody. Do you know this would have been another holocaust? I mean, they were going to kill the Jews. It was not going to be good. And uh, God raised up Esther and Mordecai. And uh, God raised them up and used her. And what did he say? For such a time as this. And so tonight, you may, you may be seeing some disconnected, unconnected details in your life. And wondering, what are you doing? God, I don't understand it. I can't piece this together. And, and the things that are happening, you may get disinterested and say, what has that got to do with where I am right now? But God is working behind the scenes for something that you're going to encounter later. Though God may be hidden, he is not absent. 
Don't take the fact that he's hidden to be that he's absent. He is at work just as much tonight as he's ever been at work. On the heels of disaster, he's just as much at what you look at as disaster. He is just as much at work as he's ever been at work. Just because he's hidden does not mean he's absent. No mention of God here, but you'll find the name of God. You'll find, you won't find his name mentioned, but you'll find him all through the book. You won't find any mention of sacrifice or scriptures or prayer. But not one mention of God. Where is he at? So someone might conclude that he's not there. But he is there. He is there. Esther shows us that even in a distant, faraway country, God's beloved people are still in his hands. No matter how rough things are going politically, and they think that God has forsaken them in this God-forsaken land. And when they're not even concerned about their future, their own selves, God's working. And this was no accident. The fact that Vashti would not do this was no accident. God established that. So that Esther could move in the forefront and God would use her in a great way. Can God eliminate or God can God miraculously eliminate adversity? Can he? He can. Can he heal a body with cancer? He can. Can he turn five loaves and two fishes into a meal for 5,000 hungry men? He can. He can. And at times he does. But not typically. Not typically. God's at work behind the scenes, weaving, maneuvering, Moving things. How many of you have looked back? You know, I, we, we spent uh, five years in Arkansas. Hot Springs. And my wife and I were talking the other day. Isn't it amazing how you can remember things from your childhood? But 15 years ago, not so much. Obviously, assuming that you're more than 15 years removed from your childhood. <laughs> How many of you remember, remember vividly things from your childhood? Would you raise your hand? Mitchell, don't raise your hand. You remember everything vividly, so. <laughs> so, you remember, but, but for the five years that were, and we were in Arkansas, uh, 2004, 2009, I remember generally what happened. But unless I go back and look at a, a diary and a, a, my journal, I can't really tell you all that happened. You ever been through a period of your life when it looks like a blur? Brother Greg, I bet y'all, I, I don't know for sure, but I bet some of the days in the, all that was just one blur to some, to some degree. Well, things just kind of run together. And, uh, and you think, but have you, have you looked back being on this side and look back to the other side and saying, wow, boy, now I sure didn't have a clue what he was doing, but he was doing something. Matter of fact, if he hadn't have done that, Brother Joe, well, I'm glad you're home. Amen. Amen. If he hadn't have done that, we wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be where you are. There, there are ways that God's used you in your life that uh, you, you, you take away that, that time that you, non, the non-incident, um, times when it doesn't look like he done anything, but he did. He did a whole lot. And as we, as we make our way through this book of Esther, I want you to see tonight, there's not one casual detail in your life. 
And that goes for the ones that are not very comfortable. You know, I talked to, talked to Brother Timmy today and I talked to him. I think I've talked to him every day, at least once or twice a day since Sunday. And talked to him today just one time, been very busy today. And he's trying to get, he's trying to get Miss Nancy back here to, to I think, I think Baptist is the plan. I think that's the plan. And um, so she's in Mexico, had a heart attack. Um, she's stable to the degree that, that uh, can talk and stuff, but. Probably some more work needs to be done, so they're trying to get her back here. So you pray for that. Pray that they're, and they're right on the edge of that. I, last I talked to, they're right on the edge of getting her back here. But as I, and, I, and we didn't talk about this a lot, but we did mention it. So, so somebody that God put him with several years ago, and there were so many people, connections, he said, you know, this guy, He's over the he's over the whole jet thing at Baptist, not the helicopter, but they're not going to the helicopter. Right? <laughs> the jet, the uh, air division, he's over the whole thing in there. In the, and God put us together here. But you see, now you may not know why, and it may be a painful occurrence. Now that that meeting that he he was talking about earlier, you know, when he met this guy originally, wasn't it was just a casual meeting supposed to casual but but you know there may be times in your history in your past that that wasn't very pleasant how many of you had some unpleasant days we all have I have you have do you know every knife God's ever used to do surgery on me was for his glory and it ended up for my good in eternity it's going to be for my good Every knife that's been used to cut on me, first of all, I'm not talking about physically. First of all, it wasn't out of his knowledge, and it wasn't out of his plan. He used every bit of it to bring, for what did he say? For such a time. He said, Esther, who knows? We're going to dig into all that. Chapter 4, verse 14. Esther, who knows? God may have just brought you here for such a time as this. So I'm saying to you tonight, don't get mad at those things that you... Right now, you may be in a whirlwind, feel like on a hamster wheel, have no idea what you're doing or what God's doing. None. Zero. Just keep being faithful to Him. Because one of these days, all these parts are going to connect. They're going to connect. Like a big old, big old board of dominoes. They're just going to fall right where they need to go. Exactly. And you wouldn't have put it together and you wouldn't have put it like that. You wouldn't have drew it like that. But that's how God, let him do that. But what I want you to see tonight is don't think that one part of your life is out of his control. Don't think that for a minute, that one detail. There's some of you in here, I would have never said, I would have never wanted you to go through what you went through. I've wept over many, for many of you, the things that you've went through. I've, I've just poured my heart out in God and said, God, I don't know why you're doing this. Lord, I don't know why you're allowing this to happen. And we may never know. And you know what? He doesn't owe us an explanation. But boy, it is so, such a blessing when you get on the other side of it. You get together and you say, see what, do you see what he did? I'm glad I was there because I see what he did. I see what happened. I see clearly what he was doing. Do you know how many people in my life he's kept me from? Do you have know many people in your life that God's kept you from? 
Just, just from evil influences, God's kept you from. Do you know how many wrecks you haven't had? As I said earlier. There was, there was probably, probably most mornings, there's probably somebody, especially Friday, Saturday morning, somebody driving drunk, run off the road, hit a pole. Could have very well been you or me. God created a non-event so he could perform his will in your life. Don't get upset when you don't see it. Don't get mad. Don't think you're out of God's will just because things are not happening that you can see. Hang in there. Stay faithful because chapter 4 is coming. Chapter 4 is coming. Just endure all this stuff. What? What? What she, I, I don't understand this. I mean, really, if you look at this from outside, it don't make sense. You take out the other part, it makes no sense. But when you put it all together, it makes perfect sense. And that's what God's doing in your life. Father, we thank you for this night. Lord, thank you for your blessings. And Lord, I'm, I'm thankful Though you may be hidden from me, you're never silent. You're always at work. You're always working. Lord, I thank you for that. And God, I pray for that individual tonight who may be here and may not know for sure that heaven is their home. Lord, I pray that you'll save them before it's everlasting too late. And Father, I pray for that one who's here who may be wondering if you're doing anything at all. God, help them see you're with them. You're for them. And we'll thank you. We'll praise you. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You may be here tonight. You say, Pastor, I'm here, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure if I died tonight, I'd go to heaven. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved, Pastor, and I want you to pray for me. Is there anyone who'd say, Pastor, pray for me? And I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But I, I never want to have a public service where I don't do this. Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to come to you. But I'll pray for you. Anyone like that? Pastor, pray for me. Is there anyone like that? Say, pray for me. Just a moment. Pastor, pray for me. How about this? You say, Pastor, I'm here. And I know I'm saved. But I'm going through a season in my life right now where I feel like God is very distant. And Pastor, I want you to pray for me that I'll stay close to the Lord. When I don't understand what's going on, I want to stay close to Him. I don't want to bail out. When things get tough. Pastor, pray for me. Would you lift your hand and pray for you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. Anyone else? I know I'm saved. How many say, Pastor, I'll be honest, there's some things happening right now that I don't fully understand in my own life. Would you lift your hand and pray for you? Thank you. I'm going to pray for you. Hey, let's commit tonight, when, even when you don't understand it. He's faithful. He's trustworthy. You say, Pastor, people let me down. And they will. But him never. Never. Never will he let us down. Never. Let's stand together. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Miss Carter's going to play for us. As she plays this evening, would you come and let the Lord help you? Would you come and let the Lord help you? Would you come and let the Lord help you? Maybe you just want to come and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me trust you in things.
as she continues to play you. Come on, come on. Come, let the Lord help you. While these are praying, you need to come. 